Hello, you're looking for something new to do this holiday? Why don't you come down to Miller's Mead Hall? We've got the chief bee, we have a cosmic cow, we have a narrator who does a terrible Scandinavian accent which sounds more like Irish mixed with Canadian. Come and take a selfie on the yard chairs, or gather around and warm up by the fire pit. Please not, we are not liable to any burns or injuries you may sustain if you fall in said fire pit. Come try out some of our craft beers at the bar. It is called the Mead Hall after all, so come down and enjoy the rest of the Yuletide celebrations with us here at Millie's Mead Hall. Hello everyone and welcome to a special one-off speed build here in Planet Zoo. And today I am making a cool little Viking Mead Hall or Feasting Hall. So before we go on I just want to say I know Mead Halls and Feasting Halls aren't exclusive to just Vikings. They were just in general Germanic people had Mead Halls but I decided to just call it a Mead Hall. I mean, not meat, or uh, Viking. Use the word Viking just to, uh, just so people will know the general style that I'm going for. Because when I say, I say Viking style, most people should know what kind of building style I'll be going for. And also, it's a bit of a clickbaity thing because people will be like, ooh, it's a Viking build. If I say Scandinavian dining hall, it probably won't catch as many people's eyes. Or, what, what was that sentence? Wouldn't, it wouldn't catch the eye as well, or wouldn't sound uh, familiar as the word Viking but anyway so the reason I'm building the a Viking style or Scandinavian style hall here is because the Arctic pack came out recently or well, actually wasn't recent it was like almost a month no no it was recent and that came with a whole bunch of these Scandinavian building pieces and I wanted to get used to them so I decided yeah let's build a big old feasting hall here and also because last year, Christmas time, or around this holiday season time, in Zoo Tycoon 2, I built a what was it, a Roman farmyard, kind of to show for Saturnalia, which was a holiday people used to celebrate in Rome around Christmas time. And I decided, no, if I'm going to do another Christmas special this year, it will be a Yuletide special, because Yuletide is the holiday that came before. Christmas and it was celebrated by Germanic people including Vikings so yes more specifically Yuletide is a what's it uh, it used to celebrate celebrations of the yeah, according to Wikipedia says celebrations of Yule to the wild hunt the god Odin hence the Vikings and some other pagan person who I'm going to butcher the name Mordranit or I have, yeah, I have no idea how to pronounce that I'm sorry if you're a historian or someone who likes mythology and knows all these names if I butchered that last one. Yeah, so building a little, so it's kind of a Yuletide special and technically according to Google, even though Christmas has passed, Yuletide is from 22 December to 02 January, so hopefully by the time this video comes out it is still Yule and this video isn't irrelevant. Now, maybe next year, next year I'll do an actual Christmas special, pull some Christmas stuff. But today it's Yuletide, which, like I said, it was the precursor of Christmas. It was a pagan holiday and then it was converted into Christmas by the Christians. So a lot of traditions from Yuletide carries over into the Christmas. But anyway, as you can see with the Mead House here, Mead House Mead Hall, I am did use a terrain roof, which was a bit of a pain to work on, not gonna lie. I wanted to have the like grassy roof feel that you often see in these uh, Scandinavian houses. Even in modern times, you still have these houses with the uh, grass roofing. I really wanted to do that, which would have been, which was like just the terrain roof would have been fine if I didn't do an interior, but I'm difficult. I wanted to do an interior. I thought, yeah, it'd be fun to challenge myself and ooh that the interior is why this video is a week later than it's supposed to be. So the real reason why Vikings put grass on their roofs, in case you didn't know, little known fact, is that it's actually to protect from air raids. And you'll think I sound ridiculous, but as far as recorded history shows, there's been no successful air raid attacks on any Viking settlements. So yeah, the, sp the facts speak for themselves. Okay, now that's just a joke. Obviously, it's not to protect against air raids because planes didn't exist at the time. But the real reason is because these little sod roofs, these grass roofs, actually, the few 
purposes and they are they're quite heavy so they help with supporting the house give a little extra weight to the roof and they actually they act as good insulation so that helps in the cold regions in the winter and well, they also look quite nice I guess that's another reason they just still have modern houses that still have these sod roofs I think I read somewhere that Norway actually every year they have competitions to see has who has the nicest grass roof is cool I would like a house with a grass roof I think they are pretty decent and they also the grass roofs last quite long they don't know at least like what I read they don't wear into but I'm not sure I'm not sure on the validity of that statement but yeah so anyway as you can see I'm um, working on the roof the ends the ends of the roof I do have just normal wooden custom like wooden roofs there because it was a uh, a little difficult to try and get the terrain to work properly at the ends there. I try and did what I could with the terrain and I had to cut corners at the ends of the house. Just, I, I hope you understand because terrain is a pain to work with. Especially later on when, like I said, doing the interior. But yeah, these uh, feasting halls were initially used by the kings or lords or jarls as they would have been called sometimes. In Germanic cultures, this would be their would their living residence, and it would be a place to come socialize. And then, when people come socialize, you'll see the kings will be watching over his what's it citizen subjects. I don't, I don't know what the word is, but the people living in the town, and they can kind of see how they see everyone there. You kind of see if you watch the TV show Vikings, you see that some of the jarls and the kings had their feasting halls. And that's how, and then everyone would come and socialize when there's a big event. So kind of, kind of like that exact same vibe, I would assume. I don't know, I wasn't actually there at the time. Oh, um, yeah. Now we, now we're working on the fun interior. So with the interior, this is supposed to be an actual thing you can place in a zoo. There's a blueprint down in the description, or there should be. If there isn't now. I will put one up later, but it should be there. And this acts as an actual like. Um, food hall that guests can come and use so there's paths I think the blueprint you might need to put in your own paths which is uh, gonna might be a bit of a pain for you but at the back of the hall I do have a cool little staff area and do have uh, some food what's it, food stations I think I have a cheap beef and a cosmic cow you can change it if you want and so guests will actually come in here and then have eat later I will make some benches that the guests can sit on you will see now I'm just doing the walls hiding the terrain away ah yeah here's the benches so right now I'm just using the default uh, what's it arctic pack bench but I do customize it a little bit later on just waiting to see when I will do that quite ah yes so yeah this is one of the custom made uh, tables I do so I use one of these African, uh, was it African benches? Okay, I'm not doing it quite yet, but I pretty much put a whole bunch of wood and logs and stuff around it. So as to give it the, like, look, it's a customized look. It's his own look, but I believe the guests can come and sit on there, even though there's objects covering the bench. Oh, at least I really hope so. I haven't tested it just yet, but we'll see in a bit. So yeah, and then the wooden pieces in this uh what's it arctic pack I keep on forgetting the name of the pack are very useful they're very very uh lo lots of uh, lots of different wood textures I think what else to say i especially like the they have half walls which are off the grid which is always nice a lot of the walls in this building are made with those half walls just to because it's off grid off grid is always better have, thank you frontier for giving us off grid pieces i love them off grid stuff so yeah I'm kind of running out of things to say not sure what else now a few animals in the arctic pack uh, I'm not sure if I'll build stuff for them maybe the doll sheep or if I build a reindeer exhibit in the future I might come back on this map and then just use this building as a background and then build a reindeer exhibit with it but it won't be a proper series this is why it's a one-off speed build so yeah I think I got a a little bit more time lapse to go through. I will have a real time portion because 
I there's a few things I didn't build on camera so I want to show you and just talk to you a little bit more about stuff in person which is hard to do in the time lapse oh and over here I'm making these cool custom tables I really like how they turned out only problem is the guests can't use them it's just the tables are too big I couldn't cover any of the planet zoo tables and also this this little table section I'm doing here is off the path so I couldn't even place any tables at that but, but I think they came out really nice they look good just a shame that no guests can use them so yeah as for what else now nah. yeah, I think that's all I'm going to talk about so I'm just going to let the time lapse run for a little bit listen to the music in the back and I'll see you in a real time portion check in a bit Okay everyone, welcome back to the real time portion and here's the meat hall in all its final glory. So I think before we go and look at the interior, let's look at the exterior. So if you want to put this in your zoo, when I, I'll do the blueprint, I'll probably have to do an, a habitat. That way we can actually get the terrain because that's a very important part of this building, the terrain roof. So but anyway. Here's one of the entrances, the lower level entrances. And I did put some flags up here just because I thought they looked cool. And over here we have a cool uh, staff path. So little dirt road staff go on here and there's a bit of a staff entrance. So there isn't an actual staff area. This area is just very bare bones. I do have a staff center in here so you will see the staff. They will come through this door in the building. And go through and sort out the electrical stuff and the go in the staff building. The staff will come back here. The only problem is these two structures do have a negative effect on the guests because they are maintenance or I don't know what staff structures. So guests when they come over here to, to the eatery or I'll, I'll show you later the guests will be upset when they come close here but otherwise you can take them out I think. I think if you put items around them, it decreases the feel. I'm not sure how that works and I don't have enough time to mess around with that. But if you want to, you can. You put this building in your zoo. So 
Let's go check out the other entrance here. Unfortunately, the way I orientated it is that this main entrance here it doesn't receive any light, I believe, no matter what time of the day. That's orientated in a bad way. I should have put it on the other side. With the other two entrances, the side entrances, they have light throughout the day. So this one gets light in the morning, and this one gets light in the evening. And the back entrance gets light throughout the day. So, <clears throat> here's the other entrance, a little higher up, and then you go down. I have this little hand railing to help people get in. And let's actually go inside. So, first thing you do when you come in this entrance, you see on the sides of you, I did put some info boards up. Just to teach some guests about some Viking stuff, so I got some weapons there and a boat there. Just made that with some art, art shapes. If you're curious, you just let me go into this. Let me show you. Yeah, so we sink in some art shapes, so you just get the corner bit there to look like lines of text. And these are some full art shapes, and just some miscellaneous lines and triangles and that. So in case you're wondering how I do that, you use the art shapes. And so over here we have a big old fire pit, which is very much a hazard for guests. If like someone's walking and they're not looking, they could very easily fall into this fire pit. It, sh it should have a fence, but I really like the look of an open fire pit, so I decided to keep it open. If guest falls in, that's just natural selection. I'm sorry, man. So, over here we have the food place. More of these menus, I did the same trick, sinking in art shapes into the wall. Got the chief beef over here, the cosmic cow. And these are just supposed to be menus with details on there. I said earlier, this is a staff door. Staff can only get in. And over here we have the bathroom, which I appropriately call the little yard's room. Yeah, I'm not going to apologize for that. I came in my head and I had to put it down. These sinks and these little boxes, I have to give two people credit. Uh, let's go in the blueprints. It's two people in the Steam Workshop did this. Okay, I this well, let's actually go outside and I can show you. The soap dispenser and the paper dispenser came from a guy, I think he's called Popple Key or Popple G. I'll put the name up on screen and the link will definitely to the workshop will be in the description because these are very well done. So I took that and for the sink I used, I used a Suicide Ups sink, modified it a little bit to get the sinks and the paper dispensers we have here. So this is a little washing up area that people will go and use and the actual toilets will be through here which guests will go through this door and walk up here. This is a ugly backstage area, but yeah. I put a bin here to kind of stop them from walking through the wall. I'm not actually sure how guests would react. I probably should have let guests in first, but you can discover that for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't have enough time to fiddle around with guests now. It just took way too long to build this. So yeah, the reason why all these buildings are here in the middle is just if I had to put them on the side anyway here, it would get rid of this terrain. And uh, I spent so long doing the terrain, so I just put them in the middle where there's enough headroom so it doesn't mess up the terrain. So anyway, over here we have the condiment station or the food tray station with the serviettes and the bins. So these two holes are bins. They are actual bins inside there, so guests will probably use them. These little art shapes here are supposed to look like food trays. These are supposed to be serviettes in little holders. And these I kinda took inspiration from Mask Bandit in his Emerald Gardens and his Planet Bro Coaster Season Zoo. He made these art shape uh, source dispenser things, so stole that. Also, have a few in the middle here. The main difference being that these ones have both sides, guests can access. Oh yeah, and I have a little door here, so staff can access the bins and empty them. And other than that, I can just show you... Oh yeah, the bar. I forgot about the bar. I added a little bar because it is a mead hall, so... People should be able to get their beer from somewhere, shouldn't they? So we have some beer taps here. The way I made this is using these... What's it? Let's go in. 
So I use these, what, what are they called again? These brackets. It's kind of look like the taps. I use these smaller brackets to look like the tap it and just use some posts to create that and some art shapes for these sinks. And just took these random bottles from the India pack, the India theme, and put some cabinets here. This one's a bit different. Different. This is supposed to look a bit like a fridge, which is why it's different to the other cabinets, but yeah. There's a little bar area I made. Really happy with that. So it stays true to its name, the mead hall. You can actually come in here and get some mead. And there's some zoos, they actually serve beer, so it's not too, too outlandish to have alcohol in the zoo. Oh, and these tables. These are, these are the, what's it you call these? These are the arctic pack tables and I just put some covers over them so they better fit in with the rest of the building. These are the African tables, which I put covers over. And these are the tables that don't work. Oh, and over here I put a down two thrones just as a photo opportunity for guests. Like they come in and they can sit here, pretend you're a Yarl and his wife maybe. And I put a no food drink sign because I don't want people coming here and eating and spilling over stuff. Which I'm sure some people will do anyway. Because people that can't read. The sign isn't super obvious, to be fair, but still, come on, man. You're supposed to eat at the table. So yeah, I think that's all to show. Last thing I want to do before we go out is just show this place at night. Because I spend a lot of time working on the lighting. My favorite view from for this is definitely from here where you just see this orangey with the fire pit. I love that orange. I purposefully didn't put a lot of lights around the fire pit just so the fire pit would give its own orangey lighting. And on all the other places I put these hanging lamps except above the tables where I put these, these fire torches I think. They're from, also from the India pack. Or India theme and I just had to put them above the tables because if I put them say in the walkway they would be way too low hanging people would knock their head and then the fire thing would fall down and it would burn the building down and we do not want that so yeah that's pretty much all we've got to show for today thank you for watching sorry this video took so long to get out I spent so much time on it hopefully it's a bad habit I'm doing try not to do it and if you want to use this this uh, building or you want to see how I did some stuff, the blueprint should be in the description or it will be if it's not yet. Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one, hopefully. Bye!